Hey y'all, what's going on? Back here in the driveway again. Another mini bike day. Got some goodies for you I want to go over. Help you guys out with some of the questions I get asked. A lot of people talk about straight chain, torque converter, jack shaft, chain size. What clutch should I get? And these are all really easily answered questions if you have a more general idea of what's going on. I see a lot of videos where it's one or the other and nothing really touches with everything just sitting here all in front of you for you to be able to see for yourself exactly what you got going on and how everything works. One of the first things that people need to understand is chain size. So if you see here, that gold chain, that's the 420 chain, and that's 35 next to it. You know, you need to figure out which chain you have on your bike first. This is almost like a bicycle chain. You're going to be able to tell right away when you're looking at your bike. If it looks like a, a bicycle chain, maybe a little bit bigger, you got a 35 chain on your bike. If it looks like a motorcycle chain, now you're looking at like the 40 series chains, like 40, 41, 420. That's the, the first thing you should be looking for on your bike when you're talking about getting a clutch or something like that on there. Both these bikes, they both run the 40 series chain, but we got a Moto Vox in the, in the shed. You know, we've had doodle bugs and stuff in here before. They all run the 35 chain. Most of the stuff, the smaller stuff, run the 35. So that's first off. You need to know your chain size. That's all you need to know. You can figure it out for yourself. You don't have to ask nobody. Take one look at your bike. You got it done. Very easy. Next to each other. Next is going to be torque converter versus jack shaft. This is a jack shaft that came off the bike. And then that's a torque converter. Now we prefer the torque converter. It's smoother. And you can see how this is small here and this is big here. As the motor revs up, you can see videos of this everywhere, as the motor revs up, this will actually come out and makes this front pulley bigger, this other one's smaller, it changes your gear ratio. So you're geared down real low from the get, and you're able to get it out of the hole real nice and good. Once that RPM starts coming up, it starts shifting those gears, your bike will start going faster, your RPM will stay the same as you're shifting. It's nice to have. Now, you can get from a dig out of the hole just as good as a jack shaft. But then you're going to have that, that transitioning in that gears. And just like anything, shifting gears. Once you change gears, you're able to get that top end speed out of it. That's why a lot of people want to go to these torque converters to get that top end speed and be able to get out of a hole nice and hard. You know, everyone seems to always love the torque converter setup, except for what I've seen a lot is the mudding guys. When you're going through mud holes and you're really swamping your bike, and that's the type of riding you like to do, everybody likes something different. If that's the type of riding you like to do, you're probably not really going to like the belt. Because the belt, just like if you ever heard a car start up, or you hit a mud puddle or something like that, and you start hearing that squeal and that's the belt slipping. Same thing happens. I ran my Megamoto through a mud hole, and I mean, there was no getting back out of it at all. Like Once it got wet, that's it. It was done. It was spinning, smoking that belt, tearing that belt up. It was not good at all. Now, if I had the jack shaft set up, I'd be able to dig right out of that hole. Now, what you'd be looking at here would be your clutch right here. This would connect to this gear right here. Then on the back side of that gear, it just connects to your rear axle. And you see right here, very similar setup. When you're looking at it, the covers look the same from the outside. When you're looking at a bike online, you're gonna have to ask. People might not really know the answer. You might want to get them to take the cover off, get a picture of it before you travel out somewhere to go pick up a bike and they're telling you, oh yeah, it's, it's got the torque converter on it. Well, because they're looking at somebody's bike that had a torque converter, they're looking at the cover on theirs and it turns out it's a stock RT. This is a stock RT setup. It's the same stuff you'll see this on all the CTs, the BTs, the Coleman stuff. This is your jack shaft setup. It's not a torque converter. That's not what it looks like underneath. This is aftermarket setup that we put on there and we had to use a riser plate to put that on there. So if you ever hear anybody talking about a riser plate, that's a riser plate. You can also use like some one inch square blocks and get it up a little bit. And now I've actually seen with this backing plate, they're now making modified backing plates which can actually lift this pulley up a little bit more so it's able to clear the frame. Without lifting this up, you're not gonna be able to clear the frame, at least on this bike. I know a lot of the common bikes it's like that. So that's why you'll hear the reference to, if you're going a torque converter, you need a riser plate or the spacer kit. That's what they're talking about, because this lower pulley ain't gonna clear right here. Whereas with the jack shaft setup, you can clearly see, even though the cover looks about the same on there, got something totally different going on inside there. And it can clear the frame, it's set up a little bit different, a little more level across, and doesn't drop down the way that 
that this does. So that's the torque converter, that's the jack shaft. Now the jack shaft uses the centrifugal clutch just like you would on a straight chain. I'll get into the straight chain stuff later. I mean that's pretty simple but right now let's talk about clutches. There's a lot of different clutches. A lot of people buy clutches, they got problems, they can't get them on, it's not working right, what's the issue, you know. When you take a look at the front side here, just like we were talking about, with those two different size chains, you can see, 35, 35, this is the 40 series chain. Now if you go online, you're just buying it for the tooth, the teeth on here, no dice, man. It ain't going to work out. You're going to run into all kinds of problems. You ain't going to be getting down the road at all. So you want to make sure you're buying. Look at what's on the bike. If you don't have something, ask around. Try to find somebody similar. That's what I do. I, I look at somebody else's setup. I, I look at their performance. I ask them how they like it. And I'll go off that and use that if I don't have anything to base it off of right away. And it's a good starting point. So going by the teeth, you want to figure out how many teeth you need what type of chain you need. That's what we're talking about, whether you need 35 series, a 40 series chain, and then you want to count your teeth. When you change these teeth on here, if you knock these down, it's going to change your acceleration, your top end. Less teeth on the front is going to give you way more acceleration, but it's going to knock it off the top end. And so it's vice versa. So you put more teeth on the front, you're going to get more top end, you're going to lose that acceleration. Now, the other thing that talk about with these clutches is if you look you can see these holes flip them upside down even that's for your crankshaft 5 eighths 5 eighths 3 quarters now the 5 eighths crankshaft you'll see a lot on like the 196 I think it's a 79 cc right then your 79 cc have one too 79 cc predator a lot of the stock stuff that comes on the smaller Coleman bikes, the three and a half horsepowers and stuff, they're a 5 8 shaft. They're smaller. And you can see it right there. And this one here is a three quarter inch shaft. Now the 196s, we got a 196 that came factory on this RT. I believe the RTs are one of the only Coleman bikes to come with a three quarter inch shaft 196. The rest of them, from what I've seen, I've torn apart and I play with, they're all 5 8 That's a big problem because a lot of people will order this this size shaft, whether it be for a torque converter, if you want to get the 30 series torque converter, they're all sold, unless you're getting a special ordered, that's a three quarter inch shaft. Three quarter inch shaft is the 212 Predator, 224 Predator, you know, all the tillets and stuff. Everything's pretty much three quarter inch shaft, except for the 196s, from what it seems like, from what I know, I don't know everything, but what I've seen is that the 196s, a lot of them are the 5 8 in shaft. So you gotta watch when you're buying this stuff, you gotta pull it off and you gotta measure it. Now, when you're measuring it, I got this 460 over here that I already should have dumped it in here. That's another story. I'll get into that. But, you know, this is your shaft. So you want to measure the diameter of your shaft. And the diameter is, you know, the widest point here. So this would be a one-inch shaft on here. But you're looking for something that's three-quarter inch shaft on your bike if you're going to be ordering the three-quarter inch stuff. Most of the stuff's three-quarter inch. And it gets to a point where the price difference, it's almost easier if you got a 196 Coleman even if the motor is brand new, it's almost easier to go out and get the 212 Predator or Tillotson because the cost of this stuff, when it starts adding up, going with torque converter and stuff like that, it's just all more money added on. And you're going to get more performance out of the 212 anyways. And you can always sell off your 196 to the kid down the street that blew his up. Make your money back on it, you know. This stuff sitting around the garage. It's a win-win for everybody. So that's going to go over the diameter of your crankshaft. You got that going on there. And then the last final part is straight chain. Very simple. When people start talking about straight chain, oh, I want straight chain. This dude does straight chain. Blah, blah, blah. Top speed, top speed, top speed. That's what it's all about, top speed. Now, we try to use our bikes on road, off road. We like to keep them as versatile as possible. That's why we got the torque converters. We can climb hills. We can still get 50 plus mile an hour out of them on a good day. And I mean, these things, they dig it out of the hole big time. But the smaller bikes, you know, you're not really doing much off-road, mostly off street riding. And the torque converter does lose horsepower. So if you got a small bike and all you really want out of it is top end power, that's when you're gonna be going for a straight chain setup. Straight chain setup, very simple. 
your clutch. Chain goes on here, this goes on the crankshaft, just like so. That chain, that gold chain would run right up around there and there is nothing else. It's all chain, just your torque converter and your chain. That's your straight chain setup. Once that torque converter locks up, that's it. You're not losing no more horsepower. It's locked in. It's solid. Now it's going to be lagging a little bit off the line, depending on how you got motor built, depending on your weight. The heavier, the bigger you are, the slower you're going to be. So I suggest if you're looking for a straight chain setup and you really want to have fun with your bike, you know, better check the scales first. You don't want to be no 350 pound guy. No offense, I'm over 200. You know, I'm not, not judging nobody, but I'm just saying, you know, 350 pound guy, you jump on a little doodle bug with a straight chain. I mean, you're not going to be getting down the street very fast. Torque converter setup is good for that. Jack shaft setup is good for that. Gets you out of the hole fast. Helps deal with that weight. The only thing straight chain is good for is very low maintenance, minimal breakdowns, and top end speed. And so if you're looking for simple, fast, easy, bingo, straight chain setup with it. Um, I'd say maintenance wise with the torque converter and the jack shaft, they're about even. You are going to be buying belts for the torque converter. You are going to wear them out. That's common with them. So you got to plan on that. This isn't going to be, oh, grandma gave me, you know, 80 bucks or 100 bucks for, for my birthday. And I'm going to use grandma's money to buy a torque converter. And that's going to last me. That's the only one I'm going to have for a whole year. I'm going to ride my bike every day. That ain't going to work. That's not going to work because you're going to burn that belt up sooner or later. And you're going to need another belt. It's not a zero maintenance machine. Just like you're changing your rule. You want to be checking your belt. You want to be checking your brakes. You want to be checking your tires, it's a wear item. When that wears out, that's got to be replaced or else you ain't going nowhere. And then this is a little bit more of a simple setup. So people will say, oh, you know, it's less maintenance, whatnot. For me, this setup was a nightmare. It just didn't work at all. There's a tensioner that goes on here. You got so many wheels, gears, springs going on in here, and it still has the bearings and whatnot in here. This one's bent. Actually, I don't I'm not sure if this one's I don't think this is off of ours. This is off another bike that we had. This one's bent. I mean, it's not really the best quality jack shafts they, they have in there. I have seen that before where these jack shafts bend. These seem to always rattle loose. The machining quality on them, you're talking about Chinese stuff here. This is no top end racing stuff. As much as some people think, oh, you know, I got a 212 Predator and exhaust pipe, I'm racing. You're not. This ain't, this ain't racing quality. This is literally industrial machine quality type stuff where the tolerances are there, where it works, basically. It's not smooth at all. And riding this bike before to riding with a torque converter, night and day. It had a very much of like a machine feel to it with the old chain set up with the jack shaft and everything going on. And with the torque converter, it's smooth as can be, smooth as butter. You're gonna be getting the same thing with a straight chain, you know, a lot smoother of a setup. You're not really having to worry about anything. But in the long run, I hope that helps clear up some of the confusion with what's going on sometimes and people start asking these questions and not really sure you might not have a dad or a friend or a buddy or a sister you know we'll say to ask and talk to you might be out there all alone somewhere trying to figure this stuff out getting confused getting frustrated you can't find the stuff next to each other this is where it's at and if there's anything i missed or if you guys have any questions feel free to just comment down below i'll try to get back to you try to help you out i mean we're all in this together we all like this hobby we all like to enjoy ourselves so this is just one more day of helping other people out, trying to make sure we can all get out there and have a great day every day, safe, happy, reliably on our mini bikes. Have a good one.